I'm going to show you how to replace a hard drive in one of these um, Apple iMacs. Uh, this is a uh, third, uh, sorry, uh, G4 power PC. Uh, it's got the swivel monitor attached to the the base. We're actually looking at the bottom here. And the first thing you want to do is remove all four of these screws on the user access base. Okay, after you take that base off, uh, you're going to see the bottom panel here. What you want to do is if you have an air card, go ahead and take that out. You'll have to disconnect the cable from the card itself. Pull that out. This one doesn't have one. Uh, go ahead and just for safety reasons, go ahead and take the memory stick out. Um, this is the user accessible one. There's also one on the inside here. And then once you do that, uh, you got some torque screws all the way around here. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and undo that, and this base plate will come off. As you can see, once you take those four screws out, this uh, the bottom portion basically pulls away uh, from the upper housing. Uh, you may have to take a uh, um, spudger and kind of go along the edge to kind of ease it out a little bit because sometimes this uh, foam will actually uh, stick in here and it kind of gets really stubborn plus you have these extra um, metal tabs that it also kind of pushes up and locks in a little bit on the top part here so once you separate this here you'll find that you can only move it a certain amount you'll want to disconnect your ribbon cables for the CD drive and hard drive and then kinda of hard to see but there's a couple cables uh, down there uh, that you'll want to disconnect as well and there's a grounding screw that you'll be able to um, disconnect once you get all that so you can slide this a little bit more out of the way for you and here is the internal memory stick if you ever wanted to upgrade that at the same time. Uh, for those of you wondering, that is the uh, onboard battery for the. Okay. Uh, basically, there's a connector here. Of course, the two hard drive, uh, sorry, IDE connectors I was telling you about. Uh, you have a main power connector and a smaller uh, connector there. These two main reason I take them off, even though you really don't kind of have to, you could work around it. Um, this one in particular, the wires are very small, and anytime small wires are involved with electronics, I find that they usually get snapped unless you are kind enough to kind of either remove them or take extreme care around them. Um, and this guy here is kind of the same thing. It gave me a little bit more room once I disconnected it to actually work. Um, and it's got some small, smaller cables in there, whatnot. So. Um, there is another um, connection here uh, that basically goes up past the CD drive here and you can kind of give it a little bit of a twist to loosen up and then pull the two halves apart and that'll give you more access past the CD drive here. Um, once you take the grounding screw out you'll be able to kind of wiggle this cable out from behind there and it separates in half here. So. Once you take that out, you can start removing the uh, CD drive. Uh, you got some torque screws here. Here, I uh, want to say there was where was it? Oh, there it is. Uh, one here, one here, and you also want to take the two out of the shielding here. Once you uh, undo those screws what you want to do is slide the uh, c um, CD drive and hard drive unit out and what you'll have is a connection on the hard drive here for the power and there on the CD drive for the power and they'll be taped down basically at both points and you'll need to undo those so you can basically get the drive out. Having that one connector undone there gives you a lot more slack. 
Um, there will also be a um, little connection here. You'll notice one end is taped because um, it's not being used. And that will basically be threaded through this little white uh, connector here. And just basically just slide it through there and that'll come out. And once everything is off here, you got your CD drive and hard drive unit here. You'll want to take this white um, protection paper off. It does have some thermal properties to it, um, according to Apple. Um, so you'll want to try and keep that intact. And you'll have a screw on each side of the drive, um, four of them all the way around. Undo that. Uh, take your IDE cable off there. Put yourself in a new hard drive and uh, button that back on. Okay, after you go through and put the drive in, you put that tape on it that I uh, told you how to remove, connect the wires back up, all that good stuff. Uh, you want to screw everything back in. You got the connection down there, here. Don't forget about those two, um, just like before. Um, before you do that, make sure that the wires are all um, threaded through that you need. The one cable that we had through that uh, loop that I was telling you about. Um, make sure that you got a little bit of slack on these power cables here because um, they can get pinched when you're pushing this um, top portion back in. And um, that should be it. I've gone through, or I've reconnected the um, two ends of the power connector there, put the grounding screw back in, uh, went ahead and connected the um, main power and additional um, connector there, and uh, of course put my uh, four screws at each corner, and the two there for the shielding, and I'm about to go ahead and close it up. Um, haven't put these on yet because I wanted to show you one thing and it would be hard to show you if I put that on because I have to basically fold this up to do that. Um, see this here? See how this is kind of, um, I guess you could say, cooked or um, kind of discolored? And if you look over here, you see pretty much the same thing. Well, uh, basically, there's your processor. <laughs> and this is a heat spreader and how the heat dissipation in this entire system works is basically the um, four screws that go from the entire base there into that section there uh, of course they connect here here uh, here and there and as you can tell they got the same discoloration there and there um, basically, when you put this base on, you want to make sure those four screws are as tight as you can get them. Because what basically is happening is your entire case is your heat sink. Um, basically, heat gets dispersed through this heat spreader and into these two corners and up through the rest of the system. Um, and that's why I also got the big fan up at the top. And this whole case is metal. The whole thing. Uh, so that acts as a huge heat sink um, to get that out. Uh, what I like to do is actually clean these off. I take a alcohol rag and I go through and rub it. Uh, each one of these to clean that off uh, just a little bit, make sure nice and clean to form a nice, good, solid connection there, and then you know screw it all back together. So I want to show you that before I went ahead and um, connected these two up and actually perform that cleaning there. Um, once you do that, uh, you can slide this whole top back onto here and um, tighten it down. Okay, as I was saying, you'll want to tighten the heck out of these screws on the bottom uh, so that you have a proper seat uh, for this thing to act like a heat sink. You want to do an X pattern, so you want to start with this top corner, then the bottom corner on the right, then go to the uh, bottom left corner, then go to the top right corner, and keep repeating that until you just really can't turn these guys anymore. Um, what I like to do is, um, once I button it all back up together, 
let it run for like an uh, hour or so, flip it back over, and give these guys another round of tightening up uh, to make sure that everything's good to go. So, last thing we need to do is just put our memory stick in, put the bottom on. You know how to do that, so I'm not going to bother showing you that if you've gotten this far. And then uh, turn it on.